Welcome to the Buffalo Stampede. I'm Derek Swanson sitting in for Sam Newman here with Coach Liz Kritza. And uh, Liz, it's been a while since we've talked volleyball. Let's go back a couple of weeks and talk about the Utah match, the last home game here at the Coors Event Center for 16 years. Um, you went right down to the wire and kind of a must-win game taking it to five. Talk about the Utah match. Absolutely. You know, there's always a little extra, a little extra emotion when it's senior night. Um, we had a group of six seniors that we had to really celebrate their careers. And I think that what ended up happening was the rest of the team really wanted to put forth our best effort. Um, and it couldn't have come at a better time. Uh, you mentioned that it was must win, and it absolutely was, just for our chances uh, to get the NCAA berth that we hadn't had in a while. So, you know, we went down to the wire, went into a, you know, a fifth set, and we were kind of, kind of trading points back and forth. And I can remember, you know, going into the locker room in between sets two and three, and kind of just reminding our team what we were playing for. Um, not just our seniors, we were playing to continue our season, because had we not been able to come away with that win, then I think that our chances for the NCAA berth uh, really would have uh, dissipated and we wouldn't have been able to continue the season. And, and not only do you go to a fifth set, but you go 16-14 in the fifth set. We did. Um, and, you know, it was uh, very just fitting, I think, that on match point, uh, Taylor Simpson, who had a fantastic match and had been, you know, really doing a great job and carrying the load for the team in the fifth set, she serves uh, what is a near ace on, on match point. And, it was a very risky serve. Uh, you know, their middles were scoring at a high clip and we had to match up well against them. Uh, but, you know, we looked at Taylor in the huddle and I asked her, so can you take the middle out with your serve? And she said, yes, ma'am. So she went right out there, served probably the toughest serve of the match at the most crucial point. And I think, you know, just as a coach, I'm happy to see that players have the guts to do that when it matters the most and uh, the entire team was supporting her. So it was really, a really good step for our program. You mentioned Taylor. I mean, she's obviously your big gun, but in that match, a crucial match, she was 20-20 double-double with kills and digs. A uh, huge game for her. Absolutely. You know, I think that uh, she's really coming to her own. I, everybody in the conference, everybody in the country knows that she can score points, uh, but to carry the defensive side of that as well, I mean, she's been playing uh, her best volleyball at the tail end of the season, which is exactly what you want from your big hitters, your big players. You want them to be able to perform as the level of uh, intensity and the level of difficulty increases, and she's done just that for us. So four days later, you get the team together at Fate Brewing Company for the NCAA selection show. You guys are 17 and 13 on the season, but you're in the Pac-12, arguably the most or the toughest conference in the country, and you're seventh. What, what's the feeling like in that room before uh, your name gets called? Uh, there's a lot of anxiety, anticipation, uh, a lot of emotion in that moment because, you know, when our name was announced, it was funny that players turned to me. They're like, Coach, did you know? I really didn't. Uh, you know, we put forth the best resume that we could so the committee would con uh, consider our entire body of work on the season. Uh, but it really came down to some signature wins for us. Uh, those wins against Washington, who at the time was number one, and Arizona was a top 25 win, and UCLA at the time was number 11. Those wins helped us separate ourselves probably from some of the other teams that were positioned pretty firmly on the bubble. And, you know, the league had the highest RPI of any league this year. And I think that, you know, if you're looking at the Pac-12 taking nine teams in the tournament, it really says something about how difficult the conference season was for us. That, that is such good video with a team that is on the bubble. When you know you're in, it's, it's great to hear your name, but to see the excitement on the girls' faces, to hear them talk about it afterwards, uh, the Buffs haven't been to the tournament since 2006, so to... To, to finally get that bid that had to be huge for your team just to make the tournament. Sure, you know, uh, it doesn't get more genuine than that. The, I mean, we were out on the patio together, Fate did a great job of um, inviting us in and getting us a separate area. And as a coach, you're always, you know, in that place where you don't know, if you don't know where it's going to go, you don't want to make too big of a deal of it because uh, you don't necessarily want to capture that same moment, but on the flip side where it's very, very disheartening for your players, but I couldn't I've uh, been happier to hear her name and then to see our players' response because uh, it kind of validated all of the hard work for these seniors especially, uh, all the up and down years, those lean years particularly. This is what they were wanting to get to. Um, and probably my favorite piece of that night was the conversation amongst my staff and my players about, okay, we're excited, we're here, but this isn't the end all um, and be all. And it's just the beginning of what the next step will be for us. And I think that carried us into a good place to prepare for the tournament. And so you head to Minnesota to play Iowa State, uh, obviously a foe you've faced many times in the Big 12. Um, the Buffs had an overall lead against Iowa State, but really Iowa State had won nine of the last 10 meetings. So they were really on a streak. What was it like going into that match against a team that you have some experience against? You know, uh, the seniors on this team had played Iowa State because they were the ones that were still uh, on the, they were on the team when we were still in the Big 12. And, you know, there's some sense of rivalry, but for the younger ones, uh, and a lot of the players that are playing on the court for me now, they'd never played Iowa State. All they knew was that 
they're a Pac-12 team and took a lot of pride in that and understanding the differences you know, between the two conferences. And it was a tough first round draw. Uh, and what I told the team actually pre-match right before we went to play was, listen, we have to own the fact that we have the ability, we have the talent, but we've been up and down through our conference season. Um, and it's tough, no one will ever doubt that. But we have this draw because of our own doing. Um, we've been playing tough teams. We've been playing teams that were probably bigger, ran a faster offense. Um, there were some you know, advantages that we had over Iowa State that we needed to be disciplined enough to take uh, and put out on the court and make sure that we saw plays all the way through to fruition. Um, and we executed all the way through and it ended up in our favor. And, and you did that. I mean, you win 3-1. Um, it was never really in doubt. The first match or, or first set was pretty tough, but it really, uh, players really stepped up. Taylor stepped up and, and had 16 total kills in the game. Kelsey hit uh, 467 and Nicole on 36 assists. I mean, that, that's a solid, uh, solid match. Absolutely. I've got to highlight the performance of Kelsey English. She had, she went on a serving run, had six aces, um, and scored 11 real points in one set. Uh, that is, I believe it's a Pac-12 record. I mean, I have to, we've got to double check and see somewhere here uh, amongst our, even our CU stats, but that's a pretty significant um, real point scoring uh, stat line for a player. And we really challenged her to serve tough. And because she was serving so aggressively, Iowa State was out of system and couldn't side out. Um, and we were able to match her up in certain rotations. And it actually helped set the stage for a successful three. The, the last three sets were very successful because of that. So, like you said earlier, you didn't want to just revel in the fact that you made the tournament. You wanted to go far in the tournament. You beat Iowa State. You match up next against number 10, Minnesota. But facing top-ranked opponents is nothing new for you guys. You beat Washington. You played UCLA. You played in the Pac-12. You guys were ready to face a team of that caliber. And really, this is one of your better matches of the season, even though you fell 3-2. Sure. You know, uh, I think... Uh, there are dozens of people that have contacted me in volleyball, people that are following our team, that called and emailed and texted to congratulate the team on the performance because it really was one of our best performances. And as a coach, I want my players and my team playing their best in tournament time. Uh, and I could not have asked for more effort, energy, fight from our players. Uh, and you know, credit to Minnesota, they're number 10 for a reason. They're a top program, but like you said, we weren't phased by having to face them. Uh, we've been in that position many times this season where we're playing the number one team and we play the number five team. So um, I think our league and the, the level of toughness, level of difficulty and the level of competition that exists in the Pac-12 helped prepare us as far as a team, this team had never been to the, the tournament. So obviously there could be nervousness and jitters and um, it, it didn't exist for us because we were able to say, hey, we've played at this level. We've actually played teams that are ranked higher, uh, teams that likely are better than the, the team that we're gonna face tonight. And they played, they played really well. Uh, but coming out of the turn when we were down 0-2, uh, I saw the team that I knew existed when we sat in our uh, the film room the first day of preseason. Uh, I challenged them to fight and no team, it doesn't matter who we're playing, we decided that there's not another team that will play as hard as, as we will. And we saw uh, some of the best points and matches and execution of, of strategy that we've seen all season. So I'm proud of them for that. I mean, to be down 0-2 to the number 10 team in the country, a lot of teams would fold. But for you to come back and then you win the next two and take it to five is a testament to the offense you guys generated in that game. You had, uh, you had five players with nine or more kills. Uh, Edelman had 50 assists. And both teams hit 300. So that's a lot of offense for that match. That's a lot of offense. Actually, in one of the huddles, you know, I'm looking at the stat sheet coming in and telling them, I said, OK, whoever's going to play defense? will win, whoever can slow down the serve received for the other team. And we started doing that in the, the third and fourth sets and we were able to come away. And we really had to keep pressure on them with our serve uh, because we're playing against teams that can side out and can score and they have multiple offensive threats. Um, and in all honesty, it's sometimes in the matchup, they had you know three hitters that could score at that pace and we only had two at the time. So when you have those differences, you have to be more aggressive to take one of those hitters out to kind of keep things in balance. Um, we were able to do that in the third and fourth. And then in the fifth, you know, there's just a series of points through the middle where you're down, you know, three points in the fifth set in volleyball. It's very, very, very difficult uh, to make that difference up in a short set. You kind of run out of, run out of game. Uh, but I will say that, you know, for the entirety of the match, um, I'm so pleased with the fight and the drive and just the consistency that these kids had. They were driven. They had a sense of purpose. Um, we had a plan, came out, followed it, and, uh, you know, basically Minnesota was just better than us in that, that last 15 points. Um, and I, if you're going to go out, every coach, of course, wants to keep playing. There's only one team that will end with the win. Um, but if you're going to go down 
at least you're going down fighting. Um, I think that's the sentiment that was shared you know, amongst our team and it really bodes well for our future you know, because there's so many players coming back. In the way that Nicole was spreading the ball around with that much offense, you would think that, that Taylor had been the story, but they probably really keyed on Taylor a lot. So she was setting Alexis Austin quite a bit. She led the team with 13 kills. Sure, you know, Alexis had a great match. There are some things that she can do uh, that nobody else on the court could do because of her physical ability and her athleticism. And she really stepped it up. There were some really key points where you know, we just looked at Alexis and said, hey, we need a kill right now. And she would, you know, she had the right matchup and uh, Edelman delivered a great set and she would just go up and over and use her athleticism to her advantage and, and get a first ball side out. You know, Kara Schrader also had a really strong performance because she balanced uh, Taylor a lot. She's on the other pin and she came, uh, came forth with a lot of experience. You could tell that she was the senior most player. And she came up big for us at some really key points, particularly in the last, you know, fourth and, and fifth set. Very good season for the Buffs. 18 and 14, best season since 2006. You do say goodbye to six seniors. We talked about that at the Utah game. You, when you lose when you're outside hitters, you lose one of your middles, you're losing a lot of firepower, but there's a lot left on this team. Nicole Edelman's back for her senior season. You have the Simpson sisters. You have Alexis Austin on the outside and a bunch of great players on your bench. There's a lot of things to be excited about for Colorado Volleyball next year. Absolutely. Uh, I think, you know, you hit the nail on the head. And, um, the players that are coming back, uh, we talked about it immediately after that Minnesota match, is they're taking, I mean, the satisfaction of the season, but there's a burning um, desire that they have to continue going. Uh, everybody in that locker room knew we were a couple couple points away from the Sweet 16, and this group of players is more committed than ever. I mean, we're not in you know, any mandatory workouts right now because our season is done, but I see these kids coming in front of my office window, coming in to work out, uh, and there's a little a little extra drive that they have uh, because they want to be certain that next year, this time, we're continuing to practice, we're continuing to play, and we're going to go for a, go for a much higher finish. And we want to make sure that we're climbing in the Pac-12, that we're taking another step. Uh, I don't think anybody is satisfied. We're very pleased. I'm very proud. But we, can, uh, we can't sit back and rest on our laurels at all because we have the tools and we have some good recruits coming in uh, to supplement the kids that we have right now. And with some good off-season improvement, I think we're going to like what happens next season. Well, congratulations on a great Thank season you. again. We look forward to everything in 2014. Thanks. That's tough to say. That'll do it for Colorado Volleyball this year. I'd like to say a special thanks to Sam Newman for hosting all season with Coach Kritza. And as always, you can check out all things Colorado at cubuffs.com.